Jirachi is currently rarely used competitively, and even though Power Creep has heard it through the years, it can still be insane. It of course has the classic mythical base 100 for everything, which is pretty solid, but what makes it a star and what's made its opponents rage for literally years is its ability Serene Grace, which doubles the chance of secondary effects with its moves. With a Choice Scarf to outspeed, it can abuse Stab Iron Heads, which now have a 60% chance to flinch, along with Zen Headbutt. Moral of the story, if this thing comes flying at you head first, run. It can also use Stab Meteor Mash for now 40% chances to boost its attack by one stage, and we can even cripple walls by using Trick to give them the Choice Scarf. Jirachi has flown under the radar lately, but sometimes old tricks can be just as good. Alright, look, Jirachi might just be the prime example of a Pokemon that's just an adorable little guy, except in reality is an absolute devil, and this thing is <laughs> extremely annoying. Not enough people are putting respect on the Rachi these days, and so that is what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing as well, consider hitting that subscribe button. Only half the people that watch these videos are subscribed, so go ahead and double check for me, and let's go ahead and get into the battle. Look, I've been Wi-Fi battling for a very long time, pretty much since it very first came out. Literally in like 2008, 2009, I have very specific memories of Jirachi literally making me want to throw my DS at the wall, and uh, we're going to try to recreate a little bit of that action in today's video. So, my opponent leads off with the Hisuian Lilligant, I lead off with the Ambipom, they turn out to just go ahead and swap right into Petrarunt. So, Petrarun is also kind of just an annoying little fella in that I don't have the greatest really swap into this thing. Obviously, Jirachi could come in if it wanted to Malignant Chain, but I don't want to risk that early because I also get hit by a pretty strong Stab Shadow Ball. So, I decide to just go for the knockoff there. I actually end up getting rid of that Black Sludge, which is nice because I need some chip on this thing. And also, uh, blocking that recovery is nice. Sadly, the monkey does get poisoned. I'm even more pink and purple out here than I was before. And I even get poisoned puppeteer. This thing literally has an ability that confuses you when you get poisoned. The double whammy is insane. And at this point, I'm feeling like, okay, so here's the situation. They can't really go for the malignant chain. That is a stab poison move that has a really high chance to get the poison, by the way. But uh, they also can't really click Shadow Ball against the Ambipom. So I decide, you know what? I'm going to go into the Jirachi here. And they actually do go for that Malignant Chain, not going to affect me, and at this point, I'm feeling pretty good that Jirachi can uh, do some Jirachi stuff. So, of course, I am Choice Scarf. I know that I can be fast, and also I can get some, ni <laughs> some nice 40% flinch chances with that super effective, nice little stabs and headbutt. And I do get that flinch, which is amazing, and we're already starting off with uh, Jirachi doing... Uh, some Jirachi stuff. So, at this point, I decide, you know what, I'm, I'm scarfed into the Zen head, but they do have the Dark type in the Gian Pao, however, and I figure, you know, if they want to switch into that, that's kind of fine. It does block it as they are going to go into this noodle, and at this point, the reason why that's not horrible for me is just because I can just go into Quagsire. I want to get Quagsire in anyway, just because getting up Stealth Rock is going to be super useful, um, and at this point in the match, I'm trying to consider whether or not I want to potentially trick the Choice Scarf onto something on their end with the Jirachi. It can be really nice to try to stop more defensive Pokemon, lock them into a move, but honestly, as I'm looking at it, the Choice Scarf is really nice here because it allows me to outspeed things like this Qian Pao, who I do have the super effective Iron Head on, and I'm probably just gonna keep that Scarf on there. So, as Quagsire comes in, I do get Throat Chopped, which might be the worst welcome into the battle of all time. I'm like, hey, send this thing out, boom, <laughs> Throat chop. but... Quagsire has like two brain cells anyway, so odds are he probably doesn't even care. So, they decide to swap into the Hisuian Electrode, and this little fella is pretty dangerous. Of course, I don't want Quagsire to be hit by like a Giga Drain, or any kind of grass stab that this thing's working with, and Quagsire is really nice as a good check to switch into things like the Gen Pao. So, I can actually just go right into the Salamence here. I figured they'd probably go for a Giga Drain. Turns out it's actually going to be the Chloroblast, which is a insane grass move that does... Uh, half to yourself, but since I were able to resist it, Salamence does not really care. And they also end up going for a second one. It probably reveals that they are choice specs, and they didn't really want to hard swap anything into Salamence here. So while the Hisuian Electro does go down, I hurricane the air, which is kind of unfortunate because that does reveal I'm a special attacking Salamence mostly. But it's also kind of bad because now they get the you know switch initiative on bringing in the Revenge Killer, which is going to be old freaking sword fangs over here. So, get the Sword of Ruin, weaken in the defense, and obviously Salamence 
is going to take like 9,000% from any ice move. So I do have to switch here, and I'm going to go right back into the Quagsire. Nothing, nothing else really wants to come in on this, and if they want to double switch, that's fine. Electrode's already gone, so Quagsire has a much more chill time here. So I come in, and uh, I do get Ice Spinnered, which is going to do a nice little chunk to me, but defensive Quagsire... Literally does not give a shit. Well, I mean, he actually, he kind of does, because I do, in fact, get two hit KO'd by the Ice Spinner, but uh, Danger Noodle does have to touch me twice, and that means Rocky Helmet damage, and it's you know, mostly fine. Quagsire does go down, however, the absolute monster of a threat does get to come back in, and Jirachi is still in a really good position in this match. With Iron Head, obviously, in the Choice Scarf, I can outspeed this thing. They don't have a lot that wants to come in. And also, thanks to the Rocky Helmet, the Chien Pao can't really switch in on the Stealth Rock anymore. I just give him some head, pause, and that does take care of it. So, that's mostly important for a few reasons. They have a lot of weakness to Psychic at this point, and that Pao was their only resistance. So with that thing gone, Jirachi has a nice little field day with some Zen Headbutts potentially in the back. So, first of all, they now get the Revenge Switch into the Great Tusk. It's literally just like one extremely scary Mon after another. And Great Tusk is a freaking menace. So I decide there's a chance they go for the Rapid Spin here. I can go into Mimikyu as a Ghost-type Spin block. But instead, they just set up the Stealth Rock of their own, which is honestly kind of fine. But also, this fake-ass Pikachu is looking like a pretty good late-game threat just itself. So I can go for the Play Rough here, get a nice uh, bit of damage. It does a round half, and it reveals this thing is Rocky Helmet. However, they go for the knockoff here, not only knocks my freaking head off my shoulders, but also gets rid of my red card, which is annoying because I feel like a red card should activate when you touch it, and then they just say no. Like, if you knock off a rocky helmet, it it does damage and then gets knocked off, so what the hell? Also, the second what the hell is that the play rough does not kill, which is annoying, and now this allows this to fire off an earthquake, and that does uh, finish off the Mimikyu. So, Mimikyu is mostly looking really good for threats like the Dragapult in the back, but... I do still have full health Jirachi, and with that Scarf, I'm able to outspeed everything. And it is time to headbutt some fools in a Zen fashion, especially without that Chien Power round. And, uh, of course, the Great Tusk here is kind of just fodder at this point. I'm able to go for that Zen headbutt. Honestly, I feel like a headbutt from a Jirachi, it wouldn't hurt that bad. He's got, like, a pointy tip going on there, but... <laughs> Moral of the story, I'm trying to say it doesn't look like... It would hurt that bad. Maybe I imagine it's soft. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> now I go into the Dragapult here on the free switch. And there is one situation here that can save me. So first of all, I am weak to things like a Shadow Ball. I don't know if this thing's physical or special. But what I do know is I'm going to be able to outspeed here and go for a Zen Headbutt. Potentially roll for a nice little flinch. And also, I can go for the Terra Steel. What that's going to do is if I do not get the flinch, I will be able to live a Stab Ghost attack now. So I go for the Zen Headbutt. And I freaking miss. And so that's just a little bit of Jirachi luck right back at me. But it turns out they actually go for the Dragon Pulse. And that is really good for me because that means they probably expected me to predict the ghost move and go into the normal type in the Ambipom. So that's actually pretty solid. I'm free to just continue head button here. Now, now it looks like it would hurt. Now there's literally a freaking axe that's ten times the size of Jirachi on my damn head. And I would not want to be on the receiving end of that shit. So I go for the Zen headbutt here as they bring in the Petarunt. That thing's kind of used up at this point. Does take care of it. And the Rachi is going on a rampage like this thing's never before. So they get a switch into whatever they like. Now, luckily, nothing like Zen headbutt here. The Lilligant does come in with a sick little twirl. I got to give him a 10 out of 10 on the landing. But I also got to give him, give him 10 out of 10 of this headbutt. I go for that Zen headbutt. Luckily, this time, do not miss. And it is going to hit for super effective damage. Does take care of it. That thing... With Victory Dance can be a problem, by the way. It's a pro these are quite overlooked Pokemon right now. Anyway, final Pokemon is going to be this Dragapult. So, at this point, I kind of figure maybe this thing is Choice Specs at this point. I can go for the Zen Headbutt. There's a 40% chance I flinch, and it doesn't happen. Now, this allows them to go for that Flamethrower. does take care of the Jirachi, which, honestly, that would have been the most satisfying ending ever had I got that flinch at the end there. But, uh, you know, sometimes 40% sometimes doesn't feel like anything. And then, and then in Pokemon... 10% feels like a lot. It's like if a move is 90% accurate, that 10% feels like a damn lot. But then a 40% flinch chance just doesn't happen. Anyway, at this point, I can go into Ambipom. And while this thing is still going to be faster at this point, if it is Specs, I likely live a Flamethrower. Actually, I do live a Specs Flamethrower. But they actually just turned their game off. So not really sure what's going on with that. I feel like Buddy was probably just mad. Anyway, that's going to bring us into game number two. This Jirachi is fun to use. And we got a little bit of a switch up of the team here. 
So first things first, looking at the matchup, everything here can kill me and I do not feel safe. There's set up potential Gyarados, Dragonite, Volcarona, Garganackle's annoying, everything here is scary. So let's just jump into it. So I'm really feeling like this special Salamence actually has really good coverage against a lot here. I was kind of expecting something like a Meowth Garada lead so I could intimidate and then spook him with a flamethrower. Turns out, however, they actually go Gyarados. So I'm like, okay, Intimidate's actually still solid. We intimidate each other. Here's a couple of guys being dudes and getting scared. So I figure this is not super ideal for me and this Salamence is pretty good utility. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and switch right into the Quagsire. At this point, Quagsire with Water Absorb, even if it wants to Dragon Dance early, I, it can't really hit me that hard and I can kind of cripple this thing. So I go into Quagsire. Turns out I get buffed by an Ice Beam, which is kind of nutty. Special attacking Gyarados, it does enough damage to the point where I'm feeling like that's probably choice specs. And I gotta admit, dude, I respect the choice specs Gyarados. I, myself, have been a special attacking Gyarados user and it really does catch people off guard. Because as I bring in Quagsire, now I'm just gonna die to like the next Ice Beam and I'm like, well, I get up my Stealth Rock and that is kind of unfortunate. Now, as I leave Quagsire in here, I probably should have switched it out, but uh, I take another Ice Beam and just die. So Quagsire came in, gets absolutely bamboozled, I set up my Stealth Rock and dip. So I did, really just don't have a lot that wants to switch into that, other than potentially Jirachi, but I'm like, you know what, I want to keep this thing as pristine as possible, because Jirachi is insane. So I can go into Jirachi now, looking extremely tiny uh, versus the Gyarados, but I am mighty. So. I decide I'm actually just gonna go for the trick here. I figure there's no way that this Gyarados stays in, and I'm thinking anything else over there probably does not want this Choice Scarf. Especially Golden Go does not want this Choice Scarf because you literally cannot give it to him. As they go into this, he is in fact good as gold. You cannot be tricked, and this thing is annoying. So with that, I'm obviously stuck into trick here, and I'm like, okay, I'm just actually gonna go ahead and switch into Meganium because as this thing likely goes for the Shadow Ball, I don't have a whole lot that can come in. Mostly because my fur, it would be a potential switch in here, but I'm actually a tidy up and last resort set. So I literally cannot touch anything until this golden goes gone with that. So I go into Meganium just as kind of the guy you send out to sponge an attack. I don't know. This doesn't fit great on the team. And truly, this Meganium is just hilarious. But what I can do is take two Shadow Balls, baby, and that's what it's all about. I can now fire off a knockoff, and they actually do end up switching out here. So something is about to be knocked off by this neck. As I imagine Meganium uses knockoff, literally just flings his neck like a giraffe. And he kind of does. I go for that knockoff here. They bring in the Meowskarada, which is fine. It actually ends up being Choice Scarf, so I get rid of that. Honestly, kind of good to know, because Choice Scarf Meowskarada is going to be extremely faster than literally everything. And now without that, Scarf Jirachi is going to be able to outspeed it. So... Here I actually decide to make a kind of a weird play. I go for the Leech Seed. Just imagining they probably go for a knockoff of their own. Going full uh, Dark type, then I could potentially Leech Seed it. And this Meganium just needs all the possible longevity it can get. But it turns out they actually just U-turn. They are going to bring in the Volcarona. And while getting the Leech Seed there is a pretty good start, this thing is extremely scary. Volcarona is it just pretty much always been those one of those mods that has the potential to pretty much just turn a game at any point. So as I sap him a little bit, I'm realizing the, I'm kind of in a bad spot here, especially with Meganium. I don't have anything I can really do here, and I'm kind of in a position where a Quiver Dance kind of ruins me. So they actually end up going right for the Bug Buzz. Not even going to Quiver Dance. They probably kind of feel like they're more set on a timer now that uh, I've got that Leech Seed. Maybe they think I go for some type of Terra, but unfortunately they do take care of the Meganium there. So honestly, Meganium wasn't going to do a whole lot for me anyway, but what it does is dies so that freaking Jirachi can come in here safely. And at this point, being Choice Scarf, I know I outspeed this thing. Bad news is I know that uh, I am susceptible if I don't get a flinch to getting hit by a fire move, but also looking at it, I probably feel like if I'm them, I'd try to Quiver Dance here. So I go into the Jirachi just out of pure, just see if I can flinch. I do not get the flinch with the Zen Headbutt, sadly, but uh, they do actually Quiver Dance, and uh, Jirachi just seems like a good guy to, guy to Quiver Dance against, which is fantastic because at uh, plus one speed, I'm also at plus one speed with that Choice Scarf. Ours is just built in out here, baby. We're repping that shit and looking fashionable at the same time. So, plus one speed, I'm able to still outspeed this thing. It's actually, I believe, a speed tie because I think we're base 100, both set at uh, plus one. I do win it, however, because Jirachi is out here winning, and that is going to kill the Volcarona. So no Quiver Dance sweep for me today, but sadly this Golden Go does a pretty good job at kind of stopping some momentum, especially with the Jirachi. So 
Here's the thing, nothing wants to switch into this. I've obviously used Meganium, who didn't do the job super well, and now it's dead, but I decided to go into the Furret. While Furret comes in, I can frisk that Air Balloon. It's like, hey, I saw that, but you just wanted to double check, I guess. But uh, I do go for that Shadow Ball. I can come in essentially for free, and I honestly am just trying to basically be at the point where I'm like, okay, they don't know that I can't touch this thing with Last Resort, but I know that they definitely want to switch into something maybe like the Garganacle here, and I'm gonna make a nice little double. The double switch back into Jirachi is interesting because it's like they're not gonna click Shadow Ball twice, and the only other option really is gonna be something like it to make it rain, which they do make it rain on these hoes, or make it hail, and that's not gonna do a whole lot of damage, but it also does give that special attack drop, and at this point, I'm like, okay, well, they can Shadow Ball now, and to cover for the potential of that, I'm gonna go for the Terra Steel. Not only is it gonna stop the Shadow Ball from being super effective, but it's also gonna give me just that extra bit of stab damage on the Iron Head. So it is once again time to bust out the absolutely massive fucking axe on my head. And honestly, I feel like it would be fun if there was weird interactions with Terra. Like Terra steel with that huge axe, Iron Head should get a boost in damage from that, right? Like surely, I mean, it hurts way more now. So I go for that Iron Head as the Meowskarata comes in. Turns out it does hurt quite a bit because that actually does take care of it. Honestly, these mythicals with base 100 stats and everything, you hit harder than people imagine, and you take attacks better than people think, and honestly, that is, it, it's a really kind of underlooked thing at the minute. I mean, it's not as good as it once was, but it's still pretty damn good, I will say. So, this now allows the switch back into the Gyarados, and at least at this point, we have the upper hand on knowing that this thing is probably going to go for like something like a Hydro Pump or some crazy special attack nonsense, or even Flamethrower. Gyarados just gets all sorts of coverage on the special side. So I can bring in the ferret, I can get that frisk, I feel up, and I'm like, yep, those are, those definitely are some glasses. I can feel them on my little ferret palms and confirmed. So the bad news is of course, ferret, I literally can't do anything here. This ferret is a very situational mod I've been trying to get to work where you click tidy up and then you click stab last resorts and you do crazy nonsense, but it's not gonna work out here as I just have to click the last resort for no reason. Um, but the good news is at least I know that this thing's locked into flamethrower and I can go right into something like the Golurk. So Choice Band Golurk, this is kind of a double trick team, right? I have the trick on the, uh, on the both the Golurk and the Jirachi, but I figure, you know, I'm just gonna go for something like the knockoff here. If I'm them, I'd probably switch into the Golden Go, and that's exactly what happens. They do bring in the little ghostly fella, and I've been trying to catch you boys all damn day. Give me all of your chocolate, because I swear to God, this thing has been annoying, but I get that knockoff, and with that Choice Band, it's actually going to be able to take care of it, and finally I can pop this thing's balloon and rain on this thing's party and finally buy all of his chocolate. So, as the Gold Angle gets sacked, now they can just go right back into the Gyarados and here's where the Stealth Rock is super important. I've gotten this thing you know, down to around half without really having to do anything and honestly, the special Gyarados is still <laughs> kind of a threat here. I'm down to three Mons left. I know that it has access to Ice Beam and I'm like, okay, I, they probably could go for like something like the Hydro Pump. So I decided to go right back into the Salamence who is gonna be intimidating except of course, it does not damn matter because this Gyarados is hitting on the special side like a beast. So they actually go for the Surf. Honestly, the Surf's not a bad idea. It, uh, it's more reliable, but Hydro Pump just hits a lot harder. But uh, I'm like, you know what? We're going to have a little, little special attack off here as I'm able to outspeed, go for a Draco Meteor, and that finally is going to knock out the Gyarados. So that thing is annoying because it was a nice little switch in to things like the Jirachi, and I'm more free to click Iron Heads all willy-nilly. So... Now they can go into the Dragonite, and again, this thing has the potential to be quite scary with the Dragon Dance here. I do want to save the Salamence. I figure, you know, I'm minus two special attack, and I'm in a position where I definitely have to switch here. The, the help with an Intimidate later might be really nice. I can basically negate a Dragon Dance attack boost, but they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra here. Of course, it is going to be Terra Normal with that Extreme Speed. And uh, here's why Golurk is a nice switch in here, because if they want to extreme speed, they're going to have to uh, go right through me, because I am dead. But it turns out they actually make a nice play. They actually go for the Ice Spinner. That covers for Salamence staying in, but also uh, for the Golurk coming in. Ice Spinner doesn't quite knock me out, luckily. Uh, and this allows me to kind of threaten with the Dynamic Punch, because if they did want a Dragon Dance here, they're going to have to be Giga Punched in a Dynamic fashion, and that shit's going to hurt. But they actually just kill me with the Earthquake. And we also know that this thing is going to be Life Orb. So with the amount of damage we have on this, uh, luckily Jirachi seems like I kind of win the fight as they do, they have revealed they have the coverage with the Earthquake. But as uh, I'm going to bring in Jirachi here, I'm thinking, okay, I'm Terra Steel. 
I can either get huge, bigger, a little bit bigger damage with the Meteor Mash or try to go for the flinch with the Iron Head. And sometimes these Dragonites be bulky, man. I'm just going to go for the Iron Head because that 40% flinch is extremely nice. Honestly, just even the high chance to get the attack boost with Meteor Mash is also nice. But they're actually going to go into Salt Boy over here. And this thing is feeling extra salty today. But uh, luckily, Iron Head's going to do a huge chunk of damage. Nearly gets that one hit KO with that boost with the Terra. And uh, Dragonite being the only other Mon here, Jirachi's just going to stay in here and just mash A because that's what this bad boy does the best. And uh, that is got to be one of the, the least kind of differences that Garg has made in some recent matches. The thing's always extremely annoying and it's always extremely satisfying to see dead. So that takes care of that. And the final Mon is going to be this Dragonite. The good news is it does have to come in, gets knocked below half after that Stealth Rock. And an Iron Head should be enough to finish this thing off. And we just go ahead and chop that diamond directly in half because Jirachi is a beast. And that is going to do it. So they could have potentially tried for that Terra Boost at extreme speed at the end there. Uh, but Jirachi would have just absolutely shrugged it off. And uh, that is the end of the game. So super fun match there. Having a lot of fun with Jirachi, honestly. Choice Scarf is a good time with this little fella. So... I do have one more bonus battle for you boys because you seem to enjoy these longer videos. Look, if you guys are going to continue watching, I'm going to continue making them because I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, in this match, first of all, it turns out to be a really solid one, but also, dude's working with more of an interesting team. They have the Galarian Slowbro. There is still the big threats like the Garchomp and the Volcarona. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So, this time, my dude's going to go ahead and lead off with the Hisuian Samurott. It is, in fact, the Barbershop because he'd be trying to give me a fresh cut out here. But Ambipom's already looking pretty fresh. I do not want to cut, so I'm going to go ahead and I can go for that fake out. Honestly, get a nice little chunk of damage there. Kind of the point where, if unless this thing's Choice Scarf, a U-turn should actually maybe be able to pick this thing off. I go for the U-turn, and it does barely hang on there. So Ambipom gets tucked in the back pocket for later. Honestly, one of my favorite little dudes to keep around, just because uh, that Pimp Slap does definitely do some damage, especially for late game stuff. So... I decide, at this point, Quagsire is actually a perfect switch in because not only do I know they're probably going to Ceaseless Edge to try to get some spikes up, they do have to touch me and I have a pokey helmet. And that is not a fun thing to touch and you are not going to be cutting my hair anytime soon, good sir. The Rocky Helmet does finish it off, which is amazing. But the bad news is now I got to look in the face of absolute death. I'm freaking allergic to grass out here and Quagsire wants nothing to do with the Meowskarata. So they bring in the Revenge Killer of the Meowskarata and I figure I'm just going to go right into the Zapdos here. Zapdos has pretty good synergy with the Quagsire defensively, but also they can they could potentially touch me and get staticked. And uh, as they go for the flower trick, it of course isn't going to do a whole lot of damage there. And uh, it doesn't get the static, which is mostly fun because I just have a nice little bite out of the leftovers. And Zapdos is actually pretty nice here. So we know that this kitty can't really do shit, and I just kind of want to throw a hurricane out there. I thought hurricane season was over, but it's, it's still going strong out here. As they actually end up switching out into in the zone, and Magnazone is definitely a fella that uh, doesn't really care about a, a hurricane. But honestly, drawing this thing in is kind of fine by me, because I do have the fire coverage with the heat wave. And while this thing can hit me neutrally, you know, with... Something like a, a Thunderbolt. I can at least scout and see what type of what type of Magnezone this is going to be. I go for the Hurricane, and I was expecting kind of something maybe like a Choice Specs Magnezone, but instead, freaking eats a berry. I don't know how a big metal UFO just munches on a citrus berry. He doesn't even have a mouth, but he does, and he does get some nice little health there. And uh, I do actually take some solid chip, and the Heat Wave range does look close. However, I kind of have no reason not to just switch right back into the Quagsire here. As I was not quite able to, you know, set up my Stealth Rock, getting up hazards is going to be nice here. This thing is the Stealth Rock, and I also have the Spike. So I bring in Quagsire. Buddy is always ready to party, but Magnezone is not ready to party. Things is going to switch right out. And he actually ends up going into the Galarian Slowbro. So this thing is absolutely armed out here, and I am in danger of being shot. But actually, Quagsire really does not care. I can set up my Stealth Rock here, kind of see what this thing wants to go for. Um, a lot of the time, these will be like a quick claw, quick draw kind of setup. Ends up going for the Psychic. Hits me on the special side. Not going to be able to do really a whole lot of damage there. It looks like a two-hit KO, but I'm like, you know, Quagsire is kind of used up at this point unless I have Recover, uh, which I do not have the Recovery. So I can just go for a nice little layer of spikes here before I go down. Uh, just like Santa Claus, leaving you a little gift for when you wake up in the morning. Come and step on some nice, sharp spikes. So they take me out with another Psychic. But I'm kind of fine with that because that's going to allow me 
uh, a nice switch into the Jirachi here. So Jirachi is threatened by this thing potentially having Flamethrower, but I'm going to end up going for the trick. I want to give this thing a choice scarf because I think that would be funny to have the slowest guy running around with a scarf. And uh, I can also see what item we're working with. I give him the scarf and I actually end up getting an assault vest. Which does work out nicely because as they go for the Hydro Pump here, uh, I use that Assault Vest to have way higher special defense. So I take that nicely and uh, yeah, Hydro Pump's not going to be doing a whole bunch there. So with Jirachi now getting rid of that, um, I'm kind of in a position to try to get some boosts going with Meteor Mash. As they actually decide to switch into the Volcarona here, Meteor Mash does connect. I not only get a critical hit, but I also get the attack boost with that. And we are looking pretty nice at this point. So I decide... If this thing is a plus speed nature, it is a speed tie. However, I actually, even if it was, I do end up winning the speed tie. Knock it out with a Zen Headbutt after that attack boost. And that is why Serene Grace is fun in multiple different ways on this Jirachi. Being able to get that attack boost, but also the flinches that come along with it. So, now they go into the Meowth Karata. I'm feeling like, you know, I probably am going to take a knockoff here. And I do have an attack boost, which kind of, if I go for that Terra Steel, which I'm going to, they're not going to be able to knock me out with a knockoff. And uh, plus one with a Terra boost, I'm going to be able to more than likely take out this Meowth So they do go for that knockoff. In my head, I like to imagine that they're probably just mad that I stole his vest. He's like, take that thing off. That does not belong to you. Uh, but I am able to live it, of course, because it's no longer super effective. And now you are about to get chopped up into kitty bits and that does uh, finish off with Meowth Garata. So anytime seeing that thing gone is amazing because that just is oftentimes the highest speed tier and with knock off and stab on everything it is scary. So in comes the Magnazone and at this point my highest damage is still Zen Headbutt even with the Terra Steel. So I go for it just knowing that it's not going to take it out but it has that high chance to flinch and it does not flinch. Sadly it uh, the 40% is not coming through for us. And uh, it is going to live to see another day. It was just kind of a, it was a worth, worthwhile gamble. Just because if I do get the flinch there, I can then knock that thing out with one more attack. And then Jirachi just kind of goes crazy. So it doesn't happen, which is mostly fine. Because now I can actually go into the Pyroar. This is a, this is a Pyroar I've been messing around with that's honestly uh, pretty damn dangerous. Here's the thing. I can come in, and I know that this Magnazone probably cannot knock me out. So I go for the Trailblaze here just for the speed boost. It literally does nothing. But this is the only way that Pyroar can get a speed boost, and damn it, we're going to take it. It turns out they actually go for the Steel Beam, which is going to do a ton of damage. However, it also knocks them out in the process, and down goes the Magnazone. So, it's actually kind of unfortunate that they knocked themselves out there, just because I was planning on being able to finish off the Magnazone with a Hyper Voice, which would then activate my Throat Spray, and then I'd have plus one special attack going into the final two Mons here. So they go into the Garchomp, and without a plus one special attack, I'm not quite going to be able to do enough to knock it out. Uh, I do get a nice little, little Throat Spray action going on, but it's not going to be enough, because this thing has Scale Shot, and that's actually the worst case scenario, because uh, late game setup Garchomps are very scary. It now gets that plus one to speed, and this thing is going to be quite quick. Garchomp's going to be zooming around this place like a damn jet. And he is, is missing some scales, however. But uh, luckily I do have some... I have honestly two forms of priority, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I decide that Weavile's kind of my best bet. And that's just because the final mon after this is going to be the Galarian Slowbro. And then I'll have the coverage with the knockoff. So I bring in the Weavile here. And luckily with the damage we were able to get with that Hyper Voice, it's definitely going to go down... Uh, to an ice shard absolutely destroy the dude slit his throat with a damn shard of ice and take care of the chomp so final mon is going to be purple pain we do know that this thing isn't quick claw it also hasn't gotten any quick draw today but he is slow bros not feeling super quick today but it takes some nice little damage from the uh, from the hazards there and i realized they actually do still have the terra in the back pocket thinking is this slow bro gonna be able to pull the game back around it is going to be a good Terra for them. It's going to go for the Terra Fairy, which is now going to allow them to uh, resist the knockoff. And the knockoff is actually kind of unfortunate because it's going to get rid of that Choice Scarf that I gave it. Um, at this point, my main goal is just to get enough chip to the point where Ambipom can come in and finish it off with either a Fake Out and then the Double Hit. But uh, it actually has the coverage with Power Gem. Sadly for them, it's not going to be able to do quite enough as a two-hit KO. I can now triple Axel. I do land all three of them, but that's actually not even going to finish this guy off. And we're just we're just rapid firing at each other here. They go for the Power Gem once more, but I do live on five because Weavile is the goat. 
I don't think Weavile's ever lived two attacks before, but today's the freaking day. And uh, one more Triple Axel is going to be able to take care of the Slowbro. So with that, that's going to be the end of the game. And uh, again, super fun. I've been kind of messing around with some, some interesting mods. Jirachi is super fun to use. And people got to put some respect on our little alien star wishmaker fella. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed the longer videos and you did stick around till the very end, go ahead and leave a comment wish. And uh, that's how I'll know that you're a real one. I'll catch you later. Peace out.